reimagining politics. That's the creative space that we all love. Uh, those who know me probably know that I'm fond of saying that we didn't just vote for a better politician of a different colour, but we voted for politics to be done differently. I was listening to Virginia Trioli on the ABC the other day, and she was talking with some former Labor and Liberal politicians about the Teals, in inverted commas, um, and the comments were that their great challenge for the next election is in identifying some tangible things that they've delivered and that they shouldn't get ahead of themselves. It's very interesting to see some of the commentary that's around at the moment. I think one of the things that's really obvious is that so many people, including journalists, just don't get it. They actually can only see what's going on through the party lens and they keep wanting to call the community independence, our community independence, teals like they're, like they're a party. I don't think they've put any effort into understanding what community communities expect of their community independent MPs. And I don't think they have any understanding of how much community is actually involved and will continue to be involved with those MPs sitting up there in Parliament House. Really, what we're seeing is a fundamental shift in the relationship between members of Parliament and their constituents. We're all part of something really big that's happening. This is transformational of Australian politics. And it's going to take a little while for some people to catch up with where we're at. So this session that we're talking about today, right now, is about how we keep communities in the community independent movement. Um, you know, this session is about empowered communities. And empowerment is such a marvellous word, isn't it? So the questions that come to mind are, how do we express being in empowered communities? How do we spread this empowerment? And how do we involve more people so that they can experience it? The big question is, the exciting question is, is how are we going to co-create a different way of doing politics with our members of parliament? So we're going to hear from four different electorates in this session. Um, I'd like to welcome Sue Barrett from Goldstein, Kath Nash from Wentworth, and Anne Charlotte Padouche from Warringah. Um, and then I'm going to follow up and talk a little bit about the experience of Indi over the last 10 years. So what we're going to talk about is what does it mean to have a community independent? How, how is the community planning to work with them? What are they hoping to do to help their Member of Parliament deliver on their commitments and how they're going to continue to build community participation? So first off, we're going to turn to Sue. Welcome, Sue. Sue Barrett there. So Sue's from the electorate of Goldstein. And firstly, Sue, tell us about your involvement in Goldstein. And then the floor is yours for about 10 minutes to talk about the exciting things that are happening in your electorate. Thank you very much, Lana. Hello, everyone. Um, uh, basically, I was one of the founding organisers of Voices of Goldstein, and then I became a Zoe Daniels campaign manager. And now I'm actually looking after community engagement moving forward. So that would be the sort of simplest way for me to describe my role. Um, I'd also like to acknowledge that I come from the land of the Wunurong people of the Kulin Nation, which actually includes the Federal Electorate of Goldstein. And I'd like to pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging and acknowledge that sovereignty was never ceded. So if I may, I'd like to share with you a short story about our quest to reimagine politics and democracy in Goldstein. Um, so let me start off by saying, you know that feeling you get when things don't feel right, feel right and you wonder, is it me or am I weird or something? So you invest years in trying to fix yourself, yet that feeling won't go away. Then one day you realise it actually isn't you, it's the current system that's flawed. I don't know if that sounds familiar to anyone, but it certainly did to me and many in Goldstein. So what I'd like to do is give you a glimpse in how a bunch of committed, community-minded people in Goldstein took back control of our democracy and to change the system for the better. A little bit of history first, though. Many of you may not know, but the Federal Electorate of Goldstein is actually named after Vida Goldstein, an Australian suffragist, social reformer and prominent women's rights campaigner 
who amongst other ventures was the first Australian to actually visit the White House and one of the first women in the world to stand for federal parliament back in 1903. A trailblazer, she actually ran as an independent five times between 1903 and 1917 unsuccessfully. So it's rather fitting that on the 21st of May, 2022, Vida's quest was finally fulfilled when Zoe Daniel, our community backed independent candidate, who has also graced the White House, won the federal seat of Goldstein. So as I mentioned, I had the privilege and honor of being involved in this historic moment from the start. First as one of the founding members of Voices of Goldstein and chair of the selection panel, whose task was to put forward a community backed independent candidate at the 2022 federal election. Then as Zoe's campaign manager, leading a community of 1500 volunteers on our quest to change the nature of politics in Goldstein and Australia. Our campaign didn't just appear in late 2021. For many in our local community, the catalyst for change started years ago when we could see the mounting evidence of the impact of climate change and how vested interests were corrupting our political system, leading party politicians to vote for their personal gain rather than their, for, for their constituents. However, something started to brew in early 2020. So this is kind of like all sorts of people were sort of thinking about stuff, but this is where it starts to come together and get gravity. If people weren't already agitated with the lack of progress in Australia and the scandal ridden federal parliament, the mishandling of the 2019-2020 bushfires by Morrison turned up the dial to fever pitch. So much fury and distress at seeing our country and our future prosperity going up in flames. People started to look for ways to affect real change because if the Australian government wasn't going to do anything, then we'd better mobilize and take back control and get action fast. So in Goldstein, community groups like Bayside Climate Crisis Action Group and individuals like me started to get organised because we were deeply frustrated with career politicians who always voted with Barnaby. So we got together and we founded Voices of Goldstein in January 2021. We built the messaging through our website and social media groups. Our numbers grew quickly through kitchen table conversations. These conversations then revealed overwhelming support for a community-backed independent candidate for Goldstein. So from forming the group Voices of Goldstein, harnessing an untapped sea of people wanting real change, we then started to actually mobilise and start a political campaign with a handful of people in November, which then led to this 1,500 person strong organisation of volunteers seven months later, resulting in Zoe winning, which I have to say was the most profound thing I think I've ever done in my life. However, it's really important to note that winning an election campaign, especially from a standing start, doesn't happen by chance, it happens by design. So inspired by the legacy and support of Kathy McGowan, in a short space of time, we created a campaign leadership team, operations and on the ground leaders and teams, fundraising teams, policies, website, campaign and media strategy, branding and messaging, marketing and advertising and social media campaigns, marketing materials and merchandising, learning and IT systems, events and community activity schedules, including street meets, leafleting, door knocking, phone banking, community Q and A events, summits, Zoe walks and bike rides, Zoe dog walks, and even a team Zoe choir, the list is long, and as well as raising $1.5 million, most of which came from our community to fund this campaign and give us a real chance of winning. It was a full on seven day a week, seven month operation. But as you can see, it was underpinned by core structure. We were like a startup on steroids. Um, we created synergy between our strategy and our messaging and the mobilization of a hugely strategically focused and very disciplined ground force underpinned by effective operations management, which we wanna carry on into community beyond you know, post the, the campaign. Of course, there were things that we, of course, could have done better. Um, we'd already undertaken operational reviews in preparation for 2025. So many lessons were learned, but we also didn't let perfection get in the way of progress. As Zoe said, we built the plane while we were flying it and we landed it exactly where we needed to on election day. What's important here is inclusivity. We had people and now have people from every walk of life, from wealthy families, elite professionals, retirees, working families, students, pensioners, you name it. Essentially, we work side by side, everyone is equal. And when I think about the Australian fair go egalitarian ethos, I thought it was a myth until I actually saw it manifest for real in our campaign. 
Our community, I believe, is a collective direct repudiation of what we saw in the Morrison and previous coalition governments and their divisive culture wars. And this type of activism was new to many people as they had never worn their political stripes so publicly before, but so urgent was it to bring about change that people stepped outside their comfort zone for the greater good. And now, of course, Zoe is our elected member of parliament for the federal seat of Goldstein, and I'm sure Vida would be very proud. So phase one, tick, phase two begins. This is where we, we cannot just say our work is done. Our work is just beginning. It's how do we stay engaged with the Goldstein community and build momentum moving forward? But we've developed the Goldstein Community Initiative, which essentially is a two-way street between Zoe and our community. And we want, to, we want to keep our volunteers on board, but continue to grow our community base so that when people join the Goldstein Community Initiative, we're going to be able to have our voices heard and have a say in how politics and democracy is done in Goldstein. We're going to be able to easily engage and share our ideas and concerns with our sitting member, Zoe Daniel, through regular community forums, hub meets, street meets, events, newsletters, social media and other activities. All the things we did in our campaign are now going to become standard procedure moving forward. We're going to help people stay up to date by, and be better informed about current issues and opportunities and news affecting the Goldstein electorate. We want to get people involved in working groups around important political, social, environmental and economic initiatives and develop positive practical solutions with our sitting member Zoe and our community so that we can actually enact local at a local and a national level. We'd like to, if we can, also build civics awareness and become more powerfully informed citizens, knowing that things we care about are being represented and act upon in Parliament. We also want to build meaningful relationships by working together to create a stronger, more vibrant and engaged community that actually benefits all and helps foster the common good. And ultimately, we want to have a greater say in Goldstein's collective future uh, and our well-being and our prosperity so that we can help protect our future of our children, our friends and our family now and in the long term. So as Zoe said throughout the campaign, if not us, who? If not now, when? And so that's our intention to carry what we did moving forward. So I hope that gives a bit of a summary and overview of our, our plans. Thank you, Sue. That was very interesting. During one of our conversations in preparation for this session, you talked to me about your deep commitment to the notion of human to human and community. Tell us a little bit about that. Absolutely. Um, you know, we can all get sort of caught up in digital and things like that. But I've said to everyone from the outset in the campaign and also moving forward that the way we're going to win this and then how we're going to keep it going is to have human to human conversations where we go out there and we truly listen to people and we really understand what's important to them. And then we show them what's possible and how they can get involved directly or indirectly in having a say. And this is the thing about finding your voice so that people know that they're not alone. When we started, you know, Voices of Goldstone, I know I met in a number of people who thought they were alone and isolated and that they were the only one feeling this way. And then they realised there was many, many more people feeling this existential angst at lack of progress. And so when you bring people together and you start having human to human conversations and genuinely listening, you actually find you have a lot more in common than you have in difference. And that's why I believe this is a direct repudiation of the divisive you know, polit political crap that's been going on. It's about inclusivity, bringing people together, you know, and I find that when you, when you work on that, people realise, you know what, we are in this together and everyone matters. And I think that's where we can put humanity back on, on you know, the map, if you like, where human decency, dignity and respect are at the epicentre. And then we can work with people much more effectively and we build trust and we build, you know, hope, and we actually get stuff done. Yeah, I think those comments go to the heart of what really makes community work. And in terms of people finding their voice, I mean, people, I suppose many people have had a voice yelling at the television. Um, what's happened is there's a place for their voice now. Um, and as long as people do it in a way that's respectful, their voice will be heard by others. So, yeah, thank yeah, you, Sue. That was yeah, and actually, just to say, we actually did develop the Goldstein standards as well, back to your point about how we'd like to conduct, you know, a civil, you know, communication. So that was very important. We adhere to that. Yeah, yeah. Terrific. Thanks, Sue. That was wonderful to hear about Goldstein. 
So, Kath, I'm going to come over to you and we'll learn a little bit about Wentworth. So tell us about your involvement in Wentworth and what's been happening there. Sure. Thanks, um, Alana. And hello, everyone. My name is Kath Naish. I'm one of the founders of um, Voices of Wentworth originally. Um, similar story, really, to Goldstein. Um, but when Allegra Spender announced her candidacy, I went on to join her team of volunteers um, and I've now taken up a new role as her community engagement manager, overseeing the constituent business and community engagement from the Wentworth electoral office. So I'd also like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land and waters around Wentworth, the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation, and pay my respects to their elders past, present and emerging. So Wentworth covers the eastern suburbs of Sydney and New South Wales. We've got the famous beaches, Bondi Beach, and other beaches, the, um, the harbour and lots of green spaces. And we're a relatively well-educated electorate, entrepreneurial, innovative and business focused, but also socially progressive. We care about refugees and we voted overwhelmingly in favour of marriage equality. We have the largest Jewish community in Australia and we are passionate about the local environment. The top issues of concern here have consistently been urgent action on climate change and the need for a federal integrity commission. Um, so Zali's Climate Act Now campaign, which um, I think she spoke about earlier this morning, was a big community led push to build local support for her bills around the country and a real catalyst for significant community momentum, which was already starting to build in Wentworth um, and North Sydney and McKellar and other electorates around Sydney. And around that time, a number of groups started to emerge, including Wentworth Climate Act Now, the Quiet Australian Stand Up, Lawyers for Climate Justice and Australian Parents for Climate Action. And despite this, there was a lack of constructive engagement from our former Liberal MP Dave Sharma on these issues. Likewise, the Helen Haynes Integrity Bill. He didn't support the bills and he didn't propose any amendments to them. And he didn't really explain properly why not to the voters of Wentworth. And there were a lot of other local concerns as well, especially around gender equity, um, wealth inequality and media diversity. So when COVID came along, all of these factors resulted in myself and a number of others, Eliana Leopold, Delia Burridge and Sophie Pollitt. We launched Voices of Wentworth with the clear intention of consolidating local groups and building consensus to facilitate more effective public advocacy on these issues that Wentworth voters cared about. We held town hall events, democracy walks, and conducted a community survey in, in order to listen um, to voters in, in Wentworth and also to inform and advocate on those issues of concern. But it soon became clear that um, Dave Sharma was not going to take this opportunity to engage with us. And before long, a separate group in Wentworth, led by Lyndall Droger, started fundra fundraising and looking for an independent candidate. The Voices of Wentworth has taken a non-partisan position, so when Allegra Spender announced her candidacy, Eliana and I decided to move over to join her campaign. Soon the teal t-shirts and the caps and the dog bandanas were a regular feature as volunteers began distributing leaflets, standing on street corners, waving placards, door knocking and attending policy events and politics in the pub. Um, in the campaign office, we had volunteers helping to organise events and responding to queries from the public about Allegra's policies, hundreds of emails and numerous media requests. Cathy McGowan visit us, visited, visited us um, and provided training on having courageous conversations and how to do verbal karate. So that was a real highlight for, for the volunteers in the office. Um, and then pre-poll and election day booth captains with their teams spoke directly with voters at polling stations about Allegra's policies and why they might want to vote for her. Um, and we had very large teams of volunteers on the, on the pre-poll and um, on the polling, polling booths. And um, the, the camaraderie around those polling booths was, was quite something. And then the big day came and the incredible experience of working together as a community to elect our own amazing candidate it was a really wonderful, joyful and unique experience that we won't ever forget. Um, and I'm sure that a lot of the other um, independent campaigns will understand just how um, amazing that, that feeling was. Um, in our post-election volunteer feedback survey, some of our volunteers shared that they felt part of a movement, that they were making a difference and creating a sense of purpose and hope. So what happens now? So our communities have large parts to play in improving the way we do politics in Australia. Following an intensive election campaign and the recent transition period establishing the electoral offices and a presence in Canberra, 
Our challenge now is to sustain and diversify our local engagement over the next three years and beyond. In Wentworth, we have set what we hope are achievable goals and created a detailed community engagement plan to help us maximize opportunities to affect positive change by partnering with our community to draw on the deep resources, skills and expertise available to us in Wentworth. We're aiming to involve as many members of the community as possible in meaningful and valuable ways with a view to creating a more consultative, collaborative and community driven framework, which can embed new expectations of doing politics differently, driving innovative solutions with transparency and accountability. So I'll set out a number of ways that we're doing this. Firstly, we'll continue to communicate clearly, regularly and effectively through regular newsletters and via Allegra's social media channels. Allegra will provide regular updates, including from Parliament during sitting weeks, as she did a few days ago, when she hosted an Instagram Live event on the new climate change legislation. So she had received a briefing from the, the Minister, Chris Bowen, and she provided a, an, a, an Instagram Live update and facilitated a Q&A directly from viewers during that, during that event. Secondly, we will hold regular politics in the pub, town halls and social events in the electorate to bring the community together and provide opportunities for feedback, also creating direct lines of communication between Allegra and Wentworth voters. Our next politics in the pub event is scheduled for the 16th of August and will take the format of an interview by political comic and commentator Dan Illich, focusing on Allegra's first days in Parliament. And going forward, we, we're hoping to provide very different types of um, events at the politics in the pub to make it really engaging and interesting for people to come along and, and, and take part in those events. Um, our first town hall event is planned for October, and this will be on the topic of the upcoming legislation for a referendum on the Indigenous voice to Parliament. So the town hall, the purpose of the town halls is to provide a more in-depth uh, focus on matters of public policy and national interest um, with expert input. We're also aiming to set up dedicated listening posts, which is an idea that we got from Indi, um, where teams of volunteers will head out into the electorate to attend market stalls and in other prominent places to ask voters what their concerns are or how they view particular issues. So we can feed this back to Allegra, as well as a large Wentworth Connects community event, um, which will bring together as many community groups in the electorate as possible around the theme of protecting our local environment. So the idea there is to, is to really encourage collaboration um, in the community and, and, and provide a focal point for people to come together and, and, and make connections and, 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 and again, um, share ideas and, and create innovative solutions. So thirdly, in the Wentworth Electoral Office, we're, we're establishing core teams of volunteers to assist Allegra in de delivering to the highest possible standards as Wentworth MP. And these volunteers are helping us now to respond promptly and professionally and comprehensively to all of the constituent queries. Um, and we get, a, we get a lot of constituent queries. And um, we need to effectively prioritize the urgent matters and as well as facilitating the federal grants programs and providing information to Wentworth voters about what grants are available and how to access these. Um, another team of volunteers is helping to run the electoral office by answering the phones and welcoming visitors and carrying out administration tasks. One dedicated volunteer is assisting our policy team in triaging requests for meetings and briefings on national policy issues. And um, so I think when we were discussing this just with um, Andrew Wilkie and Rebecca Sharkey, that we, we get a lot of requests for, for meetings and briefings. And um, so it's a real um, challenge to work out which ones to accept and which ones we want to maybe put on the back burner for a, a later date. Um, younger members of our community will have opportunities to do work experience placements and also to help out in Canberra. So another thing that we've done is we've mobilized a team of volunteers recently and we'll be doing this um, in, in, on a number of different projects, but essentially to conduct, conduct research within the electorate and produce reports to inform Allegra in her meetings with other MPs and, and ministers. Um, so the recent project we did was through our constituent engagement, um, we became aware that there's increasing local concern about access to GP services. So we were able to conduct detailed research and produce a report on how many GP practices in Wentworth are still offering bulk billing to patients and in what circumstances. Um, and this was to inform Allegra prior to a meeting with the health minister. 
So not only does this provide up-to-date snapshots of what's happening around Wentworth, but we think it sends a clear message to the government that Wentworth voters are highly engaged on these issues and will mobilise in order to provide information and push for policy outcomes. Um, and it's, a, again, a really valuable uh, use of people's time and, and that there is a real sense of reward from people when they are contributing to a, a briefing that's going directly to a meeting that Labour's having with the minister. Um, a couple more things. We're, we're also setting up dedicated reference groups in, in the electorate to focus on delivering practical outcomes locally in line with the Legos election platform. So these groups will initially be focusing on um, key local issues um, establishing a much needed second public high school in the area, delivering tangible local projects to reduce emissions in Wentworth and improving local access to mental health services, particularly for young people. Uh, finally, we'll be rolling out care in the community projects, mobilising volunteers to assist with beach and community cleanups, homeless and aged care assistance and other areas of need. So we'll continue building out these teams and involving as many volunteers as we can in various projects going forward. And we think our potential for both informing Allegra, but also reaching into different parts of our community to hear from voters is, is enormous. Um, it's really only limited by how many volunteers want to be involved and, um, and how many ideas we can come up with. So um, we're very excited about our plan going forward. And um, it's, yeah, it's, it's a very exciting time. We do view this as a partnership with the community and um, yeah, we're also looking forward to hearing the other ideas from other electorates as well. So I'll, I'll finish up there. Oh, thank you so much, Kath. I mean, it sounds like there's actually a smorgasbord in Wentworth of ways that people can get engaged and um, for people who are listening in to think about the sort of things that they might want to do in their own electorates. And of course, I'm no doubt we could go onto the website and find more details of what you've outlined, but there's a hell of a lot going on. Um, just <laughs> before I finish with you, Kath, though, I'm going to take you back to the discussion we had the other day um, and a great little message, I think, about talking about courage and, uh, and what it might mean for people to actually step forward into being involved in politics and what it meant for you? Yeah, I think, um, it, it, well, I, th I was thinking back to when we first started Voices of Wentworth, it was, you know, it did take a bit of courage. There was a bit of a fear um, that we were sticking our heads above the parapet, that, um, you know, the media would, would potentially take an interest and wouldn't necessarily be very favourable about what we were doing. Um, I think there has been, a sense that it's you know when people shouldn't talk about politics or shouldn't have too many opinions about things and um i think that's really really uh, uh, quite dangerous actually it, it 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 does make people feel a bit intimidated about standing up and, and organizing with their communities um but what i found was that actually once once you start um talking to other locals and getting together and, and forming a small group <laughs> it's it, it doesn't take much for you to start to understand just how many other people are concerned about the same things as, as you are. Um, and there is a strength in numbers. Once you start to get a bit of momentum going and, and you understand that you're not um, just one person, you know, with these concerns, you do get a lot of um, a lot of solidarity and, and courage from other people. So th those groups are a, an enormous source of um, uh, of well, of all sorts of things, friendship and and um, information and and yeah, courage just to just to go forward and and do what you want, what you think is important. Um, yeah. And and forming these groups has been, I think, really important. Yeah. yeah, terrific message, one that many of us can identify with. Thank you so much, Kath. Um, and Charlotte, now across to Warringah, where you're facing. You know, you've been in the game for a while now in, in Warringah. So you've got some runs on the board to tell us about in terms of how the community of Warringah works with Zali. So I'm going to hand over to you and let us know how what your involvement in the Warringah story has been. Thank you, Alana. Uh, first of all, huge congratulations to Kath in Wentworth and Sue in Goldstone. And it's so inspiring to, to listen to you. I was actually madly scribbling down notes of what you were planning to do. And I think that's the exciting thing as well, that there's now so much potential for collaboration, you know, uh, all these bright ideas and talents and skills in the other electorates to learn from. 
Um, so I'm really looking forward to, um, to talking more with you. Um, yeah, my name is Anne Charlotte. I'm coming to you from the land of the Gaia Magal people, and I pay my respects to the elders past, present and emerging. I first got involved with Zali's campaign in 2019 um, when my main driver was action on climate. And uh, I became one of the hub leaders in her first campaign. And then subsequently last year took on the role of volunteer coordinator and had the great honor. And it's been the best year of my life to lead the formidable team Zali. And at first we were worried, you know, can we do it again? Can we top 2019, which was such a standout election for us. And, um, and I'm glad to say we did, um, you know, we had new creativity, we had the famous umbrellas, we had people coming back in droves, we had uh, them bringing on new people. So it um, turned into a, a very joyous um, campaign again, tough. And many volunteers would say, you know, they've, uh, they've worked night and day for many, many months. Um, so it's, it's not easy, not the second time around either. And sometimes people, we're also saying, well, may maybe Zali is too good at her job because people are saying she's going to be reelected anyway. I don't have to hand out flyers anymore. And we're like, no, you can't think that. <laughs> um, so I thought I'd um, go back and look at Zali's first term. How did she collaborate with the community? And I was just going to pick two um, examples from that time um, to, to look at the collaboration. And one is the Climate Act Now campaign. And Zali um, spoke about it this morning in her keynote um, speech, but I thought I'd touch back on it because it was so important um, how, how that was done. As Zali explained, she um, consulted with the community, did a community survey. It was established that she did have the, the mandate on climate and she consulted with community groups, with interest groups, and then created the sensible climate legislation. Um, now, this was all fantastic and a fantastic start point, but then it really needed in turn the support of her community um, to, to get it um, the visibility it needed and the engagement across Australia. And that's where Tim Zali then came to the forefront again, and also Warringah Independent, which is a not-for-profit company which was established um, to first of all find a candidate, found Zali, ran her election campaign, but then also um, subsequently ran the Climate Act Now campaign and supported Zali with that. And that meant um, money to advertise, to build a website, um, to put on the online petition, and then activate our volunteers who again took to the streets, handed out flyers to social uh, media, activated friends and other electorates. And I think that's how Kath was then roped in, in, in Wentworth. And um, in the end, we had uh, people from all electorates signing the online petition and got to almost 100,000 um, signatures, a huge success. And as Zali said, it was also very important for the bill to come to the parliamentary inquiry and for submissions to be sent in. Again, um, an enormous number, over 6,500 submissions were sent in. And that was, again, driven by Warringah Independent, by the team Zali volunteers. We ran workshops on how to write a submission and, um, and, and gave Zali the support that, that she needed for that bill. And as a consequence, she has become a leader uh, in, in climate, a national leader. And um, as we know, the climate bill passed this week in the House of Reps. Um, so that was one big example, which took up a lot of our time in Zali's and a lot of her time in Zali's first term. But there were also smaller, but also very important um, other examples of collaboration. And one other is the Petroleum Exploration Permit, also known as PEP 11. That means um, there was um, the opportunity for gas companies to drill for gas and oil. It um, right um, off our coastline. And that um, permit was due to be renewed in February. Now, there had been an extended community campaign against it. Many constituents wrote to Zali, um, to, especially to community groups, Surf Ride Australia and Save Our Coast, uh, had been lobbying and campaigning very hard against it. They then teamed up with Zali, and Zali listened very intently. You know, and how can I help you? How can I support you? Um, she informed herself and then um, proposed um, a bill stopping PEP 11, which would um, take the license off the table once and for all. She moved that um, in October 2021. And then with sustained community pressure, 
on the neighbouring electorates, uh, not least, you know, McKellar with Jason Felinski, um, the government finally um, refused to renew the PEP 11 licence and our coastline was safe from gas and oil drilling. Um, so these are two examples of what has happened in the past. And now looking forward, um, we're, um, you know, like Zali and Helen were saying this morning, what, what is the next issue? Um, what's the next big issue that the community can rally around? And I think it will still be climate because much more needs to be done. Uh, but also the Uluru Statement from the Heart, the referendum that's coming up. And um, we are also going to form a working group to bring in um, people from the community with interests and expertise around that to engage with our community, um, with, with Indigenous groups, um, but also the general um, uh, public constituents to get their views um, on the referendum and then hopefully lead a successful yes campaign. And Helen Haynes has issued the challenge this morning that, uh, you know, who can get the higher yes vote? So we're, we're up for that. Um, uh, in terms of looking ahead for that second term, what we want to focus on is also even more community engagement. Zali's office is already doing a tremendous job of engaging with constituents, answering every single email that comes in, supported by a team of volunteers, um, having very regular and clear communication, having a grants officer that liaises with community groups and help them find the appropriate grants. Um, but going on, you know, above that, we really want to focus on that face-to-face -face communication, running um, politics in the pub, similar to what Kath has said, having market stalls um, pop up, um, tens, mobile, mobile offices to get Zali out into the community again after the, you know, the pause that COVID um, forced on all of us. Um, we also um, established a second physical hub, so not just the office in Manly, but another hub in uh, Mossman, the community hub where um, constituents can drop in, where they can raise issues with Zali, and just again another opportunity to engage. Um, and then next year, we're hoping to do um, a door knock project with a community survey to go to as many areas in our electorate as possible to engage with people, um, talk about issues that are important to them, but also let them know what Zali is doing or could be doing on their behalf. Um, just finally, before finishing up, uh, one of the questions, what can volunteers do for Team Zali and for, for Zali in particular. And uh, a bit like Wentworth, we've got a whole smorgasbord of opportunities and we've got fantastic volunteers already working in Zali's electorate office, uh, helping to reply um, to constituent emails, helping with casework. We're going to, we formed a new policy support team to help our policy advisor review uh, legislation and engage with stakeholders. Uh, we're going to have a policy reference group and um, and people with very specific skills that are needed in the office to, to help fill gaps. Um, then, of course, that whole apparatus of community engagement to go out into the community with market schools and door knocks um, that needs um, volunteers as well. Otherwise, you know, we would not be able to run it. And um, like Wentworth, we're also planning to do a community care program where we engage and support directly local um, organizations working the environmental and social space. So a lot more opportunities um, for volunteers. And I think that's a fundamental shift in Australian politics as well. Um, six years ago, it would have occurred to very few people in uh, Warringah to go to their MP and volunteer for them. It was just something that people did not do except for election time. And now it's absolutely an option. It's, um, it's It benefits, I think, both. It benefits the Zali and her office to have the volunteer support, but also, um, you know, the volunteers, we all get a lot of enjoyment out of um, being part of that team, of, of the connections we have. It almost feels a bit like a political club. Um, obviously, we want to expand that and bring more people in. Um, but it's um, yeah, it's it's uh, it's onwards and upwards. I think we we can build on on the success of that first term and review what what went well, what didn't, and and build on that. So my fantastic. Term, yeah, I'd actually just one more afterthought on that. Um, in terms of mobilizing the community, what we also saw um, after two thousand nineteen is that it doesn't always need the handholding of the MP to kickstart. Um, you know, movement in the community. For example, we had after 2019, uh, we had a local group that was founded, Zero Emission Sydney North, 
based on climate action in our electorate. So that was not done or prompted by Zali, but it was done, co-founded by um, Team Zali members who had seen that you, if you want to do something, uh, you don't have to wait for somebody else. You can just do it yourself and get on with it. And that group is still functioning, functioning and we're hoping to engage with um, other independent electorates and their own renewable energy groups starting up. Fantastic. And Charlotte, you gave the perfect segue, I think, to talk about Indi, because that notion of the community kick-starting things really is the fundamental premise of an empowered community. And, um, and it's wonderful to see how it develops over time. And Indi's had a few more years than Warringah, and, um, and we look forward to watching the journey of all the other electorates as, as they progress um, like we have in their own way. Um, and of course, we all know that you know, all good members of parliament do things like be out in the community, listen to the community, consult to the consult the community, uh, communicate with the community. They're all really good forms of, of community um, involvement. But I think that one of the things that's really fascinating is that because we have got community independent MPs, we have the opportunity in our electorates to extend what public participation looks like. Um, I, I thought it was interesting in this, art, just before this last election, ever since the Voices for Groups have started up around the place, every party has picked up the notion of we're listening to community. And they, I think they got the message that they better start listening. But um, as we progress with our thoughts about how communities can participate in politics, there are different levels, and we've heard about some of them already from the speakers in this session today. There are notions of collaboration, there's notions of partnership, and there's real sense of like communities being empowered enough to kickstart things for themselves. And really, when you think about it, this is all about the shifting of power, the shifting of power from being held by a few you know, politicians in political parties to what Helen Haynes often refers to as this distributing of power across her community. And this sense that in a democracy, everybody should have agency, not just at the ballot box, but all the time, because democracy is about being governed by the people, for the people, with the people. And, uh, and I think that We've had the, the great advantage in Indi of seeing this develop in our community and the changes that have taken place. Um, when we look back, um, and I look back at Cathy and Helen now, gosh, we asked an awful lot of them. Um, but in many ways, they've paved the way for some of the things that we are seeing happen now. Um, they often refer to how they work with their communities as having a compact and the compact was really about how the community will help them deliver on their commitments, but also how they will involve the community and empower the community. Helen calls this two wayness, which is a really interesting description that she thinks all the time about what it, what's the two wayness of everything she does. And, and she often talks about the fact that uh, it's underpinned by shared values that when the community independent MP actually has the shared values with the community, then that's our guide of how to work together. That becomes the sort of platform for the compact. And that's the pathway to the best outcomes. Um, it's interesting, uh, we've talked a lot already about people volunteering for uh, with our MPs in their electoral offices and even in Parliament House, which has been something that's been happening in Indi for a long time. It's been a really interesting process because as people have gone to Parliament House to work in Cathy and Helen's office and become more knowledgeable about how politics works, not only does that change them, but when they come back into their communities, that ripples through the community. We have higher levels of sort of capability in the community about how to get things done and how to use the system. So that's been a marvellous thing that's been going on now for you know, nine years in Indi and has had hundreds of people through it. So when we get to the stage of kickstarting 
um, things in the community, then that's the basis of uh, in, informed, enabled people being able to see things that need to be done and making them happen. Um, it makes me wonder actually about the notion of volunteers because if we do get to this stage of thinking that really communities are collaborating and having partnerships and being in an, in an empowered position with their members of parliament, perhaps we actually need to find another word for volunteers because volunteers to me always have the sense of being directed to do things. And I think we're getting to a stage where it's not about being directed to do things. These people in the community who are doing this work, they're really like community participants. They're like community staffers in our MPs office. They're actually far beyond the notion of being a helper and somebody who's going in to do jobs on behalf of someone else. And so I think that's a, um, something that we could think about as we move on this journey towards what an empowered community looks like and whether we find another term to talk about volunteers. I thought it might be useful to give you um, a demonstration of something that's happened in Indi that's different to um, what the other electorates have talked about and gives a sense of where things have moved over the 10 years and where hopefully um, you know, other electorates might, might be able to move to. But we had some great concern in my community in Benalla because the Australian Rail Track Corporation were implementing the Deputy Prime Minister then, Michael McCormack's project to set up an inla inland rail system. And some engineers in Adelaide who'd never even been to our town uh, drew up this engineering monstrosity to get these double stacked container trains through our little town and through our beautiful little heritage station without any concern for the passenger services or what impact it would have on our town. And of course, like lots of communities everywhere, people came together, said, this is not good enough. People of all sorts of political persuasions. I love that about community. When we join together around an issue, it doesn't matter what color we vote for. So people came together and really wanted to do something about this and formed a group. But the interesting thing is that they already had this notion that they needed to be the solution finders. They weren't just going to be the complainers. They weren't just going to go to their member of parliament or write to the deputy prime minister and say, this is terrible, you must do something about it. But there's this sense of being empowered in our communities. So they actually set about coming up with a solution, a better solution, a better engineering solution for what, for what had been proposed. And then, uh, and this I think is the substance of the whole thing, they knew how to approach their federal member of parliament and saw her as a resource to them, not as someone that they took a problem to or even a solution to, but they went to and said, we are ready now, we want the ear of the decision makers. And Helen was their resource. She enabled the, the group to um, have a, a hearing at the Senate inquiry and to actually present. She, uh, I don't know how she did this, but she wove her magic at some stage. And the Deputy Prime Minister, Michael McCormick, actually came down to have a look at our station and said right there and then, well, yes, the community solution is a better solution. And so this whole way of the relationship between the community and the federal member of parliament has really evolved over time to this sort of really strong collaborative partnership and resourcing of the community by the federal member. And um, I can only say that was in stark contrast to the state member who um, we don't have that relationship with because that's not how things work. And her, um, her response to our request was to stand up in Parliament and ask a question. And we know that that can happen so many times and it just falls on deaf ears. So we saw action, we saw traction and we saw change and we saw the community in charge of their own change, which was the most exciting thing. And that's just but one example of like how things have evolved over 10 years in Indi. Um, the people in Indi have been busy, busy writing a book. You may know this, 
which is actually telling the story of this whole journey of becoming an empowered community with lots of examples of the sorts of shifts, these fundamental shifts in our relationship with our Member of Parliament and how the community rallies around. Um, so I thought that was a really useful example after uh, now we're entering into our fourth term, um, having an independent candidate. And I feel really excited even after 10 years to be part of the um, evolvement of this journey of doing politics differently. And uh, so that takes me back to talk to each of you as we finish up this session and ask you in turn, what's your vision as we you look down the track to 10 years time? And what do you have a sense of what's possible in your, your electorates? What would you like to see happen if you are sitting here in 10 years time and saying, this is how we're, we work with our Member of Parliament? So Sue, can I jump to you first? Well, I think if we tie it all together, that we actually have a vibrant community where democracy is actually well understood and how people actually engage with it. There are pathways, there are avenues, um, the doors aren't closed, the doors are wide open, and people actually can have some guidance and structure about how they can engage actively with their local member, but also with each other. So I would like to see, you know, like we have, you know, like we have public transport infrastructure or those sorts of things happening. I'd like to see a democracy infrastructure and how people actually can actively engage uh, or just sit on the sidelines, but they're going to be well informed about what they can do uh, as, uh, you know, constituents and citizens of our country. Thank you, Sue. Kat? Um, yeah, look, I, I really like the idea of the MP being a resource and um, uh, as what, what I described with our sort of reference groups, I, what we're hoping to do is to empower people to essentially find their own solutions, innovate, come up with ideas, um, be relatively autonomous, but, but equally, you know, to have this channel that they can use to get resources and get information and also to be heard at a, at a national level. So I think um, going forwards, I would like to see that um, becoming the norm and being you know more and more talked about in the community and and a, so, and also a focal a focus point for people to come together and, and feel um involved in the process yeah terrific Kat. and Anne charlotte well my vision is a bit more sort of national that we have a lot more community-backed independence and that it's the end of the two-party system but really a, a parliament where people come with the best of intentions to represent not just their community, but also focus on what's best for the nation or in terms of climate best for um, you know, the, the planet and, um, and, and work together and, and listen to each other and, uh, and collaborate rather than automatically being against something just because the other party said it. So I'm hoping that there's uh, a lot more collaboration in parliament, uh, a bit like some of the European parliaments where they're you know, small parties and bigger, medium-sized parties, and they all collaborate together, and um, there's more of respect for each other, and that in, in terms of our own electorate, that it becomes more normal to, to take play your own part in democracy, that it's not a spectator sport, you know, I think that's the slogan for this convention, but that everyone can make a difference and step up. In this session, we've heard some wonderful thoughts and principles and ideas about how we're going to make politics different in Australia and how we're going to make the community independence movement even stronger and, and moving forward. Um, I was thinking about the fact that we used, and Charlotte, the notion of next steps. And listening to Helen Haynes this morning, she actually finished what she said by saying, perhaps not next steps, it's actually time to step in, um, which I thought was a great notion to step into participation. And, um, and so for us, all of us in our electorates, um, continuing to do the outreach work that we do to build a platform for people to step in and to build that participation so that everybody feels like there's a place for them is such a noble task for all of us. And even though we can think about all the really big issues and we can think federally and we can think about where we'd like to see the community independence um, movement go to, um, really uh, the thing that's going to make the greatest difference is every single person 
who finds there's a place for them to participate and for the for them to have a voice. And that everyday work we do, talking to people in our communities, is really the fundamental work that's going to change things. And so I really do think we're seeing a shift in the in the uh, national narrative about how politics works. And uh, and our big uh, aim is to keep community at the centre of it. So thank you and uh, look forward to the journey of all your electorates.